Hi, I'm Violet Craft. I'm a fabric designer and a foundation paper piecing quilt pattern designer. But last year, I started to get really interested in another kind of paper piecing, English paper piecing. I really wanted a project that I could take with me on the go because you can't always be doing foundation paper piecing at your machine. So what I started to see everywhere were hexagons and different English paper piecing designs. This is one that you might have seen before. This is a basic hexagon that's been done on hexagon templates. And when they're put together in this design, it's called a grandmother's flower garden. This has been around for decades. So this is not something new. But I really wanted to put a spin on it and uh, do something a little different. So today, the project that we're gonna work on is the lion. This is what an English paper piecing pattern might look like with a map on the inside that shows you where each of the different pieces go and a chart that shows you where the fabric should place. Once you've picked your fabrics, you can just put a little piece of tape on there and tape it on so that you can follow it as you go. Um, I like to find all of the templates that are the same and bring those together and put them onto one piece of fabric like this. I've got one here that I haven't taped on yet. I like to use a tape roller and just put a little bit of double-sided sticky tape on there. It only needs to stay in place long enough for you to be able to cut these out and start our basting. So I'm gonna use just a pair of scissors. And these can be rough cut. We need to leave at least a quarter of an inch. I think that's what most patterns call for. I like to leave it a little heavier. Um, I don't find a reason why it shouldn't be wider. And that way, this is really something you're gonna handle a lot. And if you have some fraying, you've got a lot more fabric there to just make it a little more secure. Move that out of the way. So once you have one that's got a nice seam allowance on the side, I like to glue baste. There are different kinds of English paper piecing and ways to baste it, but with the glue, it really makes it go fast. And hand sewing all of these together is already gonna take time, so let's save ourselves this trouble. <laughs> so we're just gonna take a glue stick, and this is a water-soluble glue, and place it right on there and glue our edges back around the template. These templates are made of a heavier cardstock, so they'll really hold the form. You wanna to try to get it, the fabric in tight, but not too tight, because you are gonna be stitching through there. So once we go all the way around, you'll be watching your corners. You might find that you have your dog ears that hang off the edges, and that is completely fine. You don't need to take those off. I actually find that they help the pieces nest together a little better. And my final edge. Now some people like to take these and iron them down to give it um, a little more staying powder, but I've found that I've had no trouble with these coming apart in the time that I need them to stay together. So once we have them glue basted, we find two pieces that should go together, and I'm gonna refer back to our map. 109 goes up here, and 110 goes right there. And see, there's where those dog ears just really nested in together well. We're gonna take these and put them right sides together. And now we're ready to hand sew. So um, I like to sometimes use a clip to hold these in place while we go. And I like to use a milliner's needle this one, I believe, is a size 10. You can see I went ahead and kept the one that's a little warped because as I go in my stitching, every one of them gets the same little bend on it. Um, and the thread that I like to use is an 80 weight polyester. Um, I also like 100 weight, but I've really found that the finer polyester thread is sturdy and it also slips through very easily. So I'm gonna take my needle and just go right into the corner. I personally don't like to get all the way in the very, very corner. That way there's a little room for when the next piece goes on for you to be able to match anything up without having it tightened in there too tight. So I've gone ahead and put that stitch in and I'm gonna put two in. With this fine polyester thread, you can do two to three stitches. And I'm kind of holding my thread down here out of the way and just pull that right through. Ooh, my little ear got caught. And there we go. 
and you're just gonna keep doing that. You want your stitches to be about a 16th of an inch apart. And what you're doing is you're going through the two layers of fabric without catching the paper. And you'll find that your needle will find its home for you. It'll just slip right through the edges of that fabric without catching the paper. And you're gonna do this all the way to the end. And again, I like to stop just before that end so that when I go to add my next pieces on, I've got a little spot there. So once we have a lot of pieces put together, this is where I am with my project. I've come pretty far, <laughs> but I've left some spots to show you some tricks for how to get some of these crazy angles to fit in together. So what I've done here, and this is what a back looks like, I've sewn these two pieces together fully, and now we're ready to add this one on, and that's where I've stopped. So if we take these, and put them together and match up that end. Go ahead and don't be scared to bend your other templates. You can take those and just completely press them so that you've got a nice straight line and you're no longer dealing with some crazy angle. In this part, you can either continue on where you just left off from that edge, but if you are working with something that you're worried about those angles lining up and everything coming together in your points, start from this side and work from this corner back. And then each piece that you add on, you can do the same. You can start from the next edge and work your way back. And that way, every point is coming together as you go. This is what the front will look like. All of your tiny stitches and everything is smooth. And on the back, you have all of your seam allowances and you'll see I like those nice thick seam allowances. But then people ask, what do you do about the paper? Does the paper stay in? Does the paper come out? The paper all comes out. With uh, the glue basting, it's great because you don't have any basting stitches to pull out and you can save your papers. So we are going to pull this back and it, see how it just pops away? It's great. Just pull off our glue, like so, and you give it a little push from the back and the templates just pop right out. And you can reuse these templates over and over again. And I'm not worried about pulling these middle templates out even though my project is not done. Once you have the pieces torn out, you anything as long as there is one on the outside edge. So in this case, I would only leave these outside pieces and go ahead and pop all these out all the way around. In a pattern like this, you don't need to use, reuse these right away, but say you are making something like a grandmother's flower garden and you don't wanna buy 10,000 templates, you can do a certain amount of them, stitch them all together, and then you'll be able to flip those over, pop those templates out, and keep going on your project. One of the reasons that I love the English paper piecing and why I really wanted to do it was because I wanted to take it on the go with me. So to do that, I've been able to organize all of my pieces into cute little containers like this. So every project that I'm working on has its own container. In this one, I have my templates ready to go. These are the ones I've finished. And then I have all of my fabrics already pre-cut to the size that I need them to be. Um, and some of these you'll see that I even pre-sewed the fabric into half square triangles so that when I go and put it onto my template, I'll have added design features in my project. So as I said, that is one of the main things about English paper piecing that I love. You can take it with you. And people ask, what's the difference between English paper piecing and foundation paper piecing? Well, English paper piecing, on the go, you have the templates, you wrap them, in the fabric, everything is hand sewn. With foundation paper piecing, you have a large template that multiple pieces of fabric are sewn onto with a sewing machine. They're completely different projects. They just happen to have similar names. So once you've made one of these English paper piecing projects, what are you gonna do with it? There's so many different things. There are small projects, but that doesn't mean they can't be pieced into something larger. In this case, we've finished this one out as a pillow. This particular project does finish square, so there weren't any extra edges that I needed to cut off. But sometimes if you're using, say, a hexagon, those will come off the edge and you have to figure out what point you're gonna take those and cut them off at. Um, I like to quilt these with really basic quilt lines. I love a good straight line, and the reason is it doesn't take away from all of that wonderful piecing work that you've already done. Another thing that you can do is to just make a quilt. In this case, we've made a mini. Something like this could be used on your wall, or it could also be um, a table runner, but they're also great to put on the sides of bags, 
They make really great gifts. People love that hand piecing, and I hope that you will too when you try your own English paper piecing project.